ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the most truthful speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things when you invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray wa kullu dalalatin fil nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam hatam al asam al hatam al asam was one of the earlier generation scholars and he said ta'ahad nafsaka fi thalath idha amilta فَذْكُرْ نَظَرَ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكِ وَإِذَا تَكَلَّمْتَ فَذْكُرْ سَمْعَ اللَّهِ مِنْكِ وَإِذَا سَكَتَّ فَذْكُرْ عِلْمَ اللَّهِ فِيكِ He said, May Allah have mercy on him, رحمه الله, command yourself with three affairs. When you perform an act, remember Allah's sight over you, that Allah can see you. When you say something or you speak, remember Allah's hearing you. over you and when you remain silent about something remember Allah's knowledge about you this statement is very profound because it brings us to the point the realization that Allah knows everything hears everything sees everything so even if we sin or do wrong in seclusion that no other human sees that Allah knows about it very well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعْهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَنُونَ مُحِيطًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says what means they conceal their evil intentions and their deeds from the people, but they cannot conceal it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He is with them in knowledge, يعني He has full knowledge of what they're doing. When they spend the night in such a way, <clears throat> in such as he does not accept of speech and ever is Allah of what they do encompassing. So believers who are aware of this, may Allah make us from the mu'mineen, they should never forget every word, every thought, every inner thought, every concealed thing is known to Allah. And that you have to behave at every moment in your life with an awareness of this fact. That if that Allah sees me, Allah hears me, And this may get you to stop doing the sin you are doing. In certain verses, they state this truth. So we always go back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا يَكُونُ مِنْ نَجْوَ ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ وَلَا أَدْنَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرَ إِلَّا هُوَ مَعْهُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كَانُوا ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says what means. Have you not considered that Allah knows what is in the heavens and what is on the earth? There is in no private conversation three people privately conversing, but Allah is the fourth. And in five people having a private conversation, but Allah is the sixth of them. 
and no less than that and no more, except that he is with them in knowledge, yani with his ilm. He is fully aware and knowledgeable of what's being said and done and planned wherever they are, then he will inform them of what they did on the day of resurrection. Indeed, Allah is of all things knowledgeable and knowing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, more ayat to prove this point. أَوَلَا يَعْلَمُونَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا يُسِرُّونَ وَمَا يُعْلِنُونَ Allah says what means, but do they not know that Allah knows what they conceal, what they hide, that only you yourself know? Do you not know that Allah knows it? And what you declare and make public? You can hide from your mom, you can hide from your dad, you can hide from your brothers and your sisters, you can hide from your husband something, you can hide from your wife something. But Allah, He knows it, even if it's concealed by you to no other human being, it's just something you know. Allah knows it. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَخْفَى عَلَيْهِمْ شَيْءٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ وَلَا فِي السَّمَاءِ Indeed, from Allah, nothing is hidden in the earth nor in the heavens. هُوَ عَالَمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ He is the knower, the knowledgeable one of the seen and the unseen. Nothing can be hidden from Him. ثُمَّ قَالَ وَهُوَ اللَّهُ فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَفِي الْأَرْضِ يَعْلَمُ سِرَّكُمْ وَجَهْرَكُمْ وَيَعْلَمُ مَا تَكْسِبُونَ and Allah says what means that He is Allah, the only Lord, the only God of the heavens and the earth. He knows your secrets. He knows what you make public. And He knows that which you earn, what you will face Him with, and what will be your, يعني, your destination when you're done with this life. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ غَيْبَ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ and Allah says what means indeed, Allah knows the unseen aspects of the heavens and the earth. And Allah is seeing, all seeing of what you do. We constantly are in this thought, when we're going to commit a crime, we're going to do something wrong. To make sure mom and dad aren't around, to make sure your husband or your wife is not around, to make sure that there's no cameras that could identify you as doing something wrong. And we ignore that the one we worship, that we pray to, that we sacrifice for, that we give for, that He knows everything that's even concealed in the depth of our brains and our hearts, that nothing is hidden from Him. ثُمَّ قَالَ اللَّهُ فَاطِرُ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا وَمِنَ الْأَنْعَامِ أَزْوَاجًا يَدْرَأُكُمْ فِيهِ لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ and Allah says what means He's the creator of the heavens and the earth. He has made for you from yourselves mates. And amongst the cattle, He has made for them mates. And He multiplies you thereby, causing the people to grow, causing the animals to grow in population. There is nothing like unto Him, and He is the all-hearing, the all-seeing. So Allah, He affirmed that nothing is like Him. But as a reminder, we cannot change the attributes that Allah gives Himself. Or that came on the tongue of his messenger وسلم, If he affirmed in a description for himself like a face and hands, like being all seeing, all hearing, having eyes, then we affirm this and we do not change it or distort it or derive another meaning from it out of our own whims. My brothers and sisters in Islam, so know that when you lie or you backbite or you slander, when there's ila wa qal, the spreading false tales, he said, she said, that Allah is fully aware and has full knowledge of everything. Now, there's also that knowledge that Allah has when we keep silent, when we see a wrong and we don't say anything about it. We see someone lying, we say nothing, something about it. We see someone cheating or stealing, we say, something, we say nothing about it. This is what was mentioned by Hatim al Asam when he said in the same way that Sakatta fadkur and Mallahi feet. And if you remain silent about a matter, then know that Allah has full knowledge about you remaining silent. Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu anhu, he said, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول مَنْ رَأَى مُنْكَرًا فَلْيُغَيِّرْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِلِسَانِ فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَبِقَلْبِ وَذَلِكَ أَضَعْفُ الْإِيمَانِ This hadith which is sahih in the sunnah of the Nisa'i, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم was heard to have said, if you see something wrong, then you must change it with your hands. And if you can't do it, then you must change it with your tongue. You must speak out about it. And if you cannot do it, then you should at least hate it in your heart. 
But this is the weakest of faith, the weakest of iman. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Atiyah, he said, and he was one of Kana, or Kana min ashab al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Kala, Kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, La yablu al abd an yakuna min al muttaqin hatta yada ma la baasabihi, Hadaran ni ma bihi al baas. This hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, A person will not reach the status of being uh, from the muttaqin, from being from the pious ones, the ones who have taqwa, who keep their duty to Allah and are righteous, fearing Allah's punishment, and putting between themselves and Allah's punishment a barrier. You will not reach the status of having taqwa until you refrain from doing something in which there is no sin, because of your fear of falling into sin. This statement is heavy, it's profound. This is a hadith you should reflect upon. You will not be a person of taqwa until you stay away from something that you don't see sin in, that has no sin in it. But you start thinking and thinking and thinking, and the chance that you might fall into sin makes you stop it, makes you not even do it, even though it looks purely halal at its base. This is taqwa. This is a person of taqwa. He stays away from an action that has no haram in it because of his fear of falling into haram. Allah, He said, إِنَّ أَكْرَمُكُمْ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَتْخَاكُمْ Indeed, that the one who is the most righteous, the one who is most pious, the one who is the best in the sight of Allah, is the one who has the most taqwa. Look at this statement again and reflect how we make certain things that are haram, halal. How we make things that are makruh be liked. Things that are disliked, we make them liked. Or we try to ignore those things. But this isn't taqwa, and Allah is fully aware of this. Thawban, he narrated عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال لأعلمن أقواما من أمتي يأتون يوم القيامة بحسنات أمثال جبال تهامة تهامة بيضا فيجعلها الله عز وجل هباء منثورا قال ثوبان يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سفهم لنا جلهم لنا أن لا نكون منهم ونحن لا نعلم قال أما إنهم إخوانكم من جلدتكم ويأخذون من الليل كما تأخذون ولكنهم أقوام إذا خلوا بمحارم الله أنتهكوها <coughs> This hadith which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Ibn Majah again a hadith we should always bring to mind, bring to light, remind ourselves of. Thauban, he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, I certainly know a people from my nation, from his ummah. People who say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, who pray, who fast, who give sadaq, who give zakat, who make hajj, who make umrah, who do the likes of this. I know a nation, I know a people from my nation will come on the day of resurrection. Their good deeds will be like the mountains of Tihama. Big, large mountains. Yani, they will come with so many good deeds on that day. But Allah will make them scattered like dust. Like they have nothing of goodness with them. Even though they did good in this life. Thauban, he said, O Messenger of Allah, وسلم, describe these people to us. Tell us more about them so we will not become like them because we didn't know. He said, they are your brothers. They're from your race. Min jaddatikum. They're from your type. Worshipping at night as you do. But they will be people who, when they are alone, when they're in seclusion, when they're by themselves, they transgress the limits of Allah. They transgress the limits of Allah when they're alone. So amongst the people, they look good, they look righteous outwardly. But when they're alone, they transgress Allah's sacred limits. Yani they sin. Because even committing minor sins in seclusion... Repetitively, repeatedly becomes to be major. Reflect upon that. Coming on that day of resurrection with deeds, so many good deeds that you did in this life, but they will be worth nothing to you, of value on the day of resurrection. Because when you were alone, when the people couldn't see you, when mom and dad couldn't see you, when your spouse couldn't see you, when your friends couldn't see you, when nobody could see you, you transgress Allah's limits and you sinned. To fulfill your desires or other than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, 
قل هل انبئكم بالاخسرين اعمالا الله سبحانه وتعالى ان سوره الكهف he says say o muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم shall we believers inform you of the greatest losers with respect to their deeds if you're doing good deeds how can you lose you heard in the previous hadith now in these ayat allah says who is the greatest losers with respect to their deeds الذين ضل صاعهم في الحياة الدنيا ويحسبون أنهم يحسنون صنعا. They are those whose effort in the life in the, is lost in the worldly life while they think that they're doing well in work. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it's very easy to deceive ourselves. We add up our donations. Mashallah, I give a lot this year. I go to the masjid. I make my prayers. I do these things. We miss all the good we do. And we're failing to realize how much we do in sin. How much we have to call ourselves to account for. We fail to look in the mirror, mirror and instead of patting ourselves on the back every day, just one day out of the week saying, what have I done wrong? What have I done to sin? And then question yourselves of those things. What was done in privacy and secrecy? So the people think I'm great, but I have this baggage that's going to make all the good I did in this life be worth nothing but dust on the day of resurrection. Reflect upon this. May Allah guide us to be of those who worship Him and fear Him. أقول قال هذا الصفر الله لي لكم إذا الله يغفر لكم ذنوبكم. إن الحمد لله. نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam Many of us lose sight, lose memory, lose thought that when we're by ourselves or what we think we're by ourselves ready to commit a sin or doing something which we know is forbidden, something that other people will look down on us upon, uh, look down upon us for. That if we see no one around and we don't see anything that's watching us, that's visual to us, we forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all hearing, that He's all knowing, that He knows everything, even the most inner thought. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ as Allah said in Surah Qaf, He said, and we are closer to, them, to Him than His jugular vein, the vein that is in the middle of your neck. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's above the seven heavens, above His arsh, above His creation, separate from His creation. But this says that, reminds us, if we were to only reflect that Allah knows what we say, what we do, what we think, he knows it all, and we cannot hide from Him. We fear the other people, but we do not fear Allah. Yet Allah knows everything and will bring us to account for those things. And Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala, atadroon aman al muflis. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Do you know who the bankrupt person is? قالوا المفلس فينا يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لا درهم له ولا متاع. They said the bankrupt person is a person who has no money, no dirham, no property. يعني they said المفلس the bankrupt. If we ask us who's bankrupt, say it's the one who's broke. He has no money, he has no property, he has no possessions. فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم المفلس من المفلس من أمتي من يأتي يوم القيامة بصلاته وصيامه وزكاته ويأتي قد شتم هذا وقذف هذا وسفك دم هذا وأكل مال هذا وضرب هذا فيقعد فيقعد فيقتص هذا من حسناته وهذا من حسناته فإن فنيت حسناته قبل أن يقتص ما عليه من الخطايا أخذ من خطاياهم فطرح عليه ثم طرح في النار. This hadith which is صحيح in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, another hadith, another hadith we should constantly reflect upon, where the Prophet said the true muflis, 
The true bankrupt person, the true person who is broken has nothing on the day of resurrection. From my ummah is the one who comes on that day of resurrection with all his prayers. He comes with all his fasting. He comes with all his zakah, his charity and his, his wealth that he spent in the cause of Allah. But he also comes with the fact that he abused this person, verbally, physically. He falsely accused that one. He accused them of lying, of cheating, of doing something vicious, haram, whatever it may be. He wrongfully consumed the wealth of this one. He wrongly consumed the wealth of some person. <clears throat> Pausing on this note, we see in our day and age the fighting that happens between family members because of the, the, the mirath, the, the inheritance. It is not up to you to say, oh, I want all my money to go to this one child of mine, to go to this uh, yeah, I mean, person or whatever it is. Allah has decreed where the inheritance will go. If you're a Muslim, it goes to the Muslims and it's divided that way. And you cannot inherit from the kafir. This alone, this consumption of wealth in a, in, in a forbidden way, is something we should all fear. Look, you can come with your prayers, your fasting your deeds, but if you stole the mirath, the inheritance that your sister was supposed to get, that your mother was supposed to get when your father passed, if they were still married, for example, this is part of the, the wedding, it's part of the, the inheritance. By taking one penny of that, you will pay a dear price. Is it worth the money in this dunya? Because this is a constant struggle amongst us. And Allah, subhanAllah, decreed it in the Qur'an, knowing that we would become people of greed and possession. The inheritance goes, as Allah said, you do not take one penny more. If you take less so that your sister or your mother or whatever has more, alhamdulillah, that's up to you. But you do not take one penny more than what Allah assigned to you. Even if she's married, even if she's well off, even if she's richer than you, you do not transgress Allah's limits. So the one who comes on that day that is bankrupt has abused this one, falsely accused this one, wrongly consumed the wealth of this one. They spilled the blood of that one. They beat this one. So he is seated and the one is requited from his rewards, meaning his rewards will be taken away from him and given to the one he wrongs. And if he runs out of good deeds and rewards because he did it so much in his life, then the sins of the one he wronged will be transferred to the one who wronged him. And this will be his case, and then he will be cast and thrown into the hellfire. Is a penny worth it? Is not controlling your tongue to just wrong somebody, revenge, is it worth it? Is it worth this, that your destination would be Jahannam? Fires and flames, the lightest punishment being a sandal that would cause your brain to boil. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, especially to the youth, the children and the youth, but to all of us, these problems that we're yeah, I mean, doing the outwardly but transgressing in secrecy of, Showing that we're doing good, but inside of us we know that we're transgressing or in seclusion and privacy, we're disobeying Allah. This can ruin all the good we do and make all those good deeds, the prayers, the charity, the fasting, everything, it can make them scattered like dust. You think you have these mountains coming to back you up of good deeds and you turn back and they're going to be like the sand. They're going to be nothing. Crumbled. So be mindful of this. Remember that Allah knows everything. Remember that Allah hears everything. Remember that Allah sees everything. So when you abandon a prayer and you say, I did it, or when you abandon a prayer and you didn't do it, and people think you did it. Right? This isn't just for the youth, for, the, for the, those who are older because they don't want someone to lecture them or really think they say, I prayed it, but they didn't. Know that Allah has full knowledge about you. And this prayer topic especially... The Prophet said, the covenant between us and them is the prayer. Whoever leaves the prayer, فَقَدْ كَفَرْ has committed kufr. Disbelief, a disbeliever. Brothers, please refrain from talking. Refrain from talking. Or you could lose your whole Jum'ah. I know some of our brothers يعني, that are elderly, may Allah reward them and grant us patience and them patience. They cannot hear, so sometimes you hear a noise and 
we, we excuse that bi idhnillahi ta'ala when we ask Allah to excuse it. But please do not. مَنْ مَسَّ الْحَسَ فَقَدْ لَغَ وَمَنْ لَغَ فَلَا جُمْعَةَ لَهَ Whoever was even to play with the carpet in front of him, whoever was to respond to the salam his brother gave him, even if it's just a hand, whoever does any of that, فَقَدْ لَغَ You have committed idle talk. وَمَنْ لَغَ فَلَا جُمْعَةَ لَهَ And whoever does this idle talk, they have no jum'ah for them. Or at least a decreased reward. This is our time, a half an hour every week, to recharge yourself, to get through the week, to hear the Qur'an, to hear the hadith, to remind ourselves of what's important. So we end up in Jannah and not Jahannam. Sacrifice your stupid phone for that one minute. For those 30 minutes. It will be there when you go out. So abandoning those prayers, know that Allah knows it. When you're greedy with the zakat, you're able to help and you say, I don't have any money, I'm sorry. Allah knows what you have. Because He's the one who gave it to you. And it's really His, He's seeing what you're going to do with it. When you engage in the likes of the evils we see nowadays that are becoming rampant, the drugs, the alcohol, in committing zina, dating, the pornography, all of this junk that we're seeing because of social media, that at first it may be innocent to your children, to you, and then you find yourself getting into things. Sometimes it's, you'll say it's natural, it just pops up. Well, that's what's there. If you really hate it, don't have that app. If something keeps popping up that you don't want to look at. The social media has destroyed marriages, destroyed families, destroyed individuals to severe corruption. So beware of these things. Allah hears you. He sees you. He knows what is there. When we refer to those alcohol and, and, and drugs, they go together. As the Prophet ﷺ said, everything which intoxicates is considered khamr. It's not just alcohol. This push to make weed and marijuana lawful and, and then this not, not in Islam. It is not in Islam. It is khamr. Consider yourself drinking Alcohol. Don't try to look for excuses. We went through this a few weeks ago. All the proofs that it is filth. Ummul Khaba'ith. It is the mother of all evils. Because of what it can cause you to do. And what becomes of you. <clears throat> so be mindful of this. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we began with the quote from one of the earlier scholars, Rahimahullah Hatim al-Asam. Where he said, He said, command yourself with three affairs. Take this home with you. When you, when you perform an act, remember Allah's sight over you. Allah sees you. When you speak, remember Allah's hearing over you. Allah hears you. And when you remain silent about something, remember Allah's knowledge about you. We will end with the reminder of what we should be doing in seclusion. When we are alone, instead of planning sin, that when you're alone and nobody's around, it's in the depths of the night, you're in your home, or you may be somewhere else at the time, even while you're working, when you're by yourself and you're in seclusion, instead of planning sin, remember Allah. Recite the Qur'an you know. Do the adhkar that you know. Even the simple subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, allahu akbar. Say it as many times as you can. Face your sins. Ask Allah for forgiveness for them plentifully. Kami astaghfirullah fil yom mi'ata marra. He used to ask Allah for forgiveness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a hundred times a day. And we're the ones sinning by the minute, by the second. So we remind ourselves with that hadith. The seven were in the shade of Allah on a day where there's no shade except for Allah's shade. The last one mentioned of those seven, to have shade on the day of resurrection. The one who will be in Allah's shade on the day of the resurrection is the man or the woman who remembers Allah when they're in seclusion. Nobody can see them. 
They were remembering Allah, they were remembering their sins, they're fearing Allah, punishing them for their sins. They're hoping for Allah's mercy. They're hoping for Jannah to be saved from the hellfire. And because of this, their eyes water with tears. This person will be shaded on the day of resurrection. On a day where there's no shade but Allah's. That's what we should be focusing on when nobody is around. Not doing something wrong that might lower our status in the people's eyes. Because in the end, they won't judge you on the qiyamah. Allah will. Allahumma khfir al-Muslimina wal-Muslimat. Al-Mu'minina wal-Mu'minat.